Disclaimer. Lore exists to help inspire creativity and story. It should not be used to lord over anyone at your game table, whether that be a dungeon master or player. Be flexible and willing to modify what exists to accommodate the story the table wishes to tell. Sevaltarm is a drow deity subservient to the whims of Loth who lords over him. He is the patron deity of drow warriors, and he lies in wait to be unleashed in a battle fury. I am Benjamin Dignan, and welcome once again to Religion in the Realms. Titles Some of the titles that Silvatarm is known by are The Champion of Lull, The Thane of Lull, The Spider That Waits, The Spider Demon, Prince of the Erinea, and Lord of the Venom Mire. In the Spider Swamp on the continent of Faerun, Silvatarm is known by the alias of Zanastu, after slaying this demon lord and taking the name for himself. Portfolio and Domains Selvatarm's portfolio covers drow warriors. Selvatarm's suggested domain for 5th edition is war. Appearance and Manifestations One common depiction of Selvatarm is that of a large spider with a male drow head, similar in appearance with the true form of lull. Another depiction is similar in appearance to that of a drider. In either depiction, Selvatarm dual wields a longsword and a mace. Both weapons are named. The mace he calls the Venom Mace. It drips acid and poison, inflicting additional damage to any target he hits. The longsword he calls Thalek Velve and functions like the magic weapon Defender. In Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes, Selvatarm is described as an eight-armed drow, foregoing his arachnid body, though still invoking a connection with the spider. Selvatarm manifests rarely in the realms. Instead, sending out his avatar if the situation calls for it. If he chooses to produce a manifestation, Selvatarm will do so through the following means. A tiny sphere of complete blackness and shadow appears before the audience. It will grow out, out after nearly 20 seconds to explode out in an effect similar to that of a blade barrier spell. Much like Lolf, Selvatar may show his influence through the appearance of images of spiders or spider-like creatures like the Milokar. The favor of Selvatar can be shown through the appearance of such objects like rogue stones, a round specific gemstone that carries wild magic, silver-colored bark, or webstone, which is a realm's term for obsidian with a spider web pattern running through it. The disfavor of Selvatarm can be shown through the shattering of armor and weapons mid-combat. Personal History Continuing the web of familial relations in the Dark Seldarine, Selvatarm is the child of Veyron and a former elven demipower Zandalar. Sandalar, faced with the onslaught of Lol and her worshippers, was able to seduce Veyron. Sandalar did so in an attempt to gain Veyron's aid in order to turn the tide against Lol. In the end, however, Veyron betrayed and imprisoned Sandalar. With the assistance of the Moharandi deity Bast, Sandalar escaped and gave birth to Selvatarm. As an immortal, Selvatarm wandered for hundreds of years. He held animosity both for his evil-aligned father and good-aligned mother, and refused to show allegiance to either the side of good or evil. Eventually, his aunt Illustrae found him and began to make inroads in turning Selvatarm towards a path of good. That was until Lolf found out, and Lolf began weaving her own plans. As mother of spiders, the presence of Zanasu irked Lolf to no end. Lolf still desires to this day total control over the portfolio of spiders, and Zanasu was encroaching on that portfolio. Zanasu, recently suffering a defeat, had waned in power. 
Seeing this weakness, Loth reached out to her grandson, Selvatarm. Lying to Selvatarm, Loth claimed killing Zanasu would elevate him in the eyes of Illustri and increase Selvatarm's power. What happened instead was the essence of the dead Zanasu radiated Selvatarm with chaos and evil. In this weakened state, Walth binded Selvatarm to her, and she has held dominion over Selvatarm ever since. During the silence of Walth in 1372 Dale Reckoning, Veyron reached the dormant Walth in the demon web pits and struck out at her. In defense, Selvatarm and Veyron engaged in combat, only to tumble down into the dark of the abyss. Selvatarm returned to Vol's side over the next couple of years, only to inevitably be slain by a servant of Illustrae in 1375 Dale Reckoning. Just like the majority of the realm's deities, Selvatarm has returned after the Second Sundering. The revised history presented in Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes is not much different than that presented in earlier sources. The familial relations between Veyron, Illustrae, Corlon, and Selvatarm have all been done away with. During his period of wandering, Selvatarm took issue with Loth and Corlon rather than Veyron and Zandalar. The rest about slaying Zanasu and being now under the power of Loth is unchanged. Personality Selvatarm is a chaotic evil deity. The only thing he cares for is the destruction caused through warfare, while he cares not for the living. He will acknowledge a warrior's fighting skill, but that acknowledgement is the height of praise towards mortals he is willing to give. He can be patient in his plotting, much like Loth, but he would much prefer to be unleashed to do battle and revel in that exchange. When he is fully let loose, his berserker rage leaves a path of destruction that almost none can contend with. Personal Realms Much like the rest of the Dark Seldarine, Seldartarm resides on the 66th layer of the Abyss in the Demon Web Pits, though he is imprisoned by law the vast majority of the time. Allies and Allegiances Seldartarm's superior is law. To call them allies would be a stretch. Selvatarm holds a deep dislike for Lol, but she holds too much sway and too much power over him. The relationship is more that of a tyrant and prisoner. Selvatarm has been noted to have ties with Garagos, the four-armed deity of the Netherese pantheon. Enemies Selvatarm's enemies include the rest of the Drow pantheon, and the bevy of deities worshipped by the different peoples of the Underdark, deities such as Laduguer, Ilsensine, and the Blood Queen. Avatar and Deity Stat Blocks I was able to find a single stat block for Selvatarm's avatar. It can be found in the second edition sourcebook, Demi-Human Deities. I was unable to find a stat block for Selvatarm as a deity in any official sources. Symbols. The singular known symbol of Selvatarm is a spider above a cross sword and mace. Central Dogma. The Dogma of Selvatarm. War is the ultimate expression of individual power, and only through power and only through battle and death can one realize the respect of one's comrades. Hone fighting skills and constantly teach those who will follow into the fray. Never give or receive quarter and die amidst the bloodlust of battle against the overwhelming odds. Cultivate as many different weapon tricks and combat maneuvers as a spider has arms. And never fear the hidden venom, like a secret vengeance waiting to strike, will serve you ill. Presence of the Faith Selvatarm is a lesser-known deity in the Forgotten Realms. Worshippers of his can be found in the north and west of the Underdark and Faerun. As the prisoner who is subservient to the winds of Lol, noble drow stay away from the worship of Selvatarm, unless it is done in secret. Instead, lower caste members, slaves or prisoners, may invoke Selvatarm instead of Lol. 
Due to their subservient role in most drow societies, Selvatarm finds worshippers amongst a lot of male drow. There are a few female worshippers of Selvatarm, but the vast majority are male. Selvatarm also counts a portion of the were spiders, the Aranea of the spider swamp, amongst his faithful. Hierarchy and structure of the clergy. The alignment of Selvatarm worshippers tend to be chaotic evil, chaotic neutral, and neutral evil. The clergy of Selvatarm are known collectively as the Selvatarklan, a drow word which translate into common as Warriors of Selvatarm. The Church of Selvatarm is not so much an organized ecclesiastical body, but instead a military arm of drow society where Lolf is worshipped. Responsibilities and Duties of Clergy and Worshippers The duties of Selvatarm's faithful are much like that of a soldier, carrying out guard duty, fighting on the front lines, and engaging in training exercises. The clergy of Selvatarm serve a subservient role to the priestesses of Lolth, observing the Church of Lolth's rituals. The ranks of Selvatarm's armies and fighting forces are expected to scream the name of Selvatarm and his various titles in the heat of battle as a battle cry. Orders and Priestly Bodies some of the different titles given to the bodies of Selvatarm's clergy are Edge of the Axe, Crush of the Mace, Steel of the Blade, Tusk of the Boar, Hunger of the Swarm, Claw of the Cave Bear, Talon of the Worm, and Bloodlust of the Berserker. Some of the high-ranking members of the Selvet Targlin go by their own unique titles. Most, however, do not go past high ranks in the military since the teachings of Selvatarm have little in the way to do with military tactics or leadership. Elite warriors of the faith are given the unique title of Spider Swords. Appearance and Dress The priests of Selvatarm wear robes that are lined with chainmail. Their hair is long and braided. They take the ends of those braids and soak them in blood, allowing them to dry into hardened ends. They are then trained to use these hardened ends in combat to distract their opponents. Even in priestly garb, they still wear steel gauntlets. They wear platinum discs around their necks with the holy symbol of Selvatarm embossed in black enamel on the disc. While adventuring, they make use of the best armor and weapons available to them. Most do not use shields, but a small minority use spike bucklers. Much like their patron deity, Selvatarm, they are mostly dual-weapon fighters. They typically wield sword and dagger, sword and axe, or like their patron deity, sword and mace. Rituals Clerics and priests of Selvatarm particularly do not prepare their spells for the day until the first skirmish of, of the day is complete. If no battle is being participated in, they will instead prepare their spells after morning exercises and drills. The Aranea that worship Selvatarm unknowingly as Sinasu perform different types of rituals than those by the drow in the Underdark. During these rituals, they ask for the assistance in their cutting actions and craftiness. These rituals usually involve the sacrifice of a lizard or boar and asking Sanasu to come back to them again. For the Aranea, the holiest day in the church of Sanasu is the sixth in the month of Kaithorn. Long ago, this was the day Sanasu first appeared to the Aranea and they still call out to him in the hopes returns once more. On this day, they practice fasting and engage in ritual combat. General locations of temples and shrines Few temples and chapels to Selvatarm exist in the realms. They seem to follow a similar design, however. In a subterranean chamber, there will be a massive black idol of a spider merging with the eastern wall. Between the spider's front two legs, are a blood-stained altar. The next two legs are raised up with a brazier suspended from them. 
The remaining four legs are bent up and lie along the sides of the idol. An enchantment on the eyes of the idol give it a permanent radiance, serving as the only form of illumination, save the braziers dangling above. Specific Locations of Temples and Shrines The drow city of Erdenlin lies in a blasted ruin beneath the high moor. During the times of trouble in 1358 Dale Reckoning, the Avatar of Selvatarm ran amok tearing apart the worship sites of the competing cults of Ganador and Veyron. Heralding the attack as a sign of Walt's power and displeasure, many of the Air Inland converted to Walt's worship. However, some also declared a change in faith directly to Selvatarm, which rose eyebrows from the Church of Walt. Chased out of Air Inland, this cult of Selvatarm found refuge in Undermountain. Here they construct the chapel of the Sericius Sarg. I was unable to find any further mention of the chapel, so hopefully with the release of the two Waterdeep adventures in September, we might hear more about its status. In the northern area of the Spider Swamp is the ruined city of Lost Ajutal. In the ruins exists a temple to Zanasu, known as the Apostolaeum of the Spider That Weighs. This temple is in worship to Selvatarm unknowingly since Selvatarm absorbed Zanasu's power so long ago. A massive stone spider-shaped dome protects the temple, where the remaining hundred priests of Zanasu keep worship in his name alive. Character Options For second edition players, you can find the breakdown for playing the Spider Sword, especially priest who serves Selvatarm, and the Demi-Human Deity Supplement. For 3rd edition players, you can find the Drow Judicator Prestige class in 3rd edition sourcebook Underdark. Judicators are arguably the highest ranking male members of Drow society. They are imbued with their powers through trials both carried out by the churches of Loth and Selvatarm. They are recognized as some of the strongest warriors in Drow society. As I like to do with all my podcasts, I put together a background for the Worshipper of Selvatarm. This background could consist of the following. Two skill proficiencies, one in athletics, the other intimidation. For language or tool proficiencies, I have chosen Abyssal and Elven as two language choices. For the ribbon ability, I would suggest taking the soldier's military rank feature from the player's handbook. For the background equipment, I would argue you could either take the acolyte's equipment or the soldier's equipment from the player's handbook. The following are just a list of subclasses that I think would be appropriate either for PC or NPC who is a worshipper of Selvatarm. Given Selvatarm's renown for raging, the path of the Berserker for the Barbarian and the PHB is fitting. Likewise, I can see the path of the Zealot from Xanthar's Guide to Everything being equally as compelling as an old champion of Selvatarm is awakened once again. The War Domain for the Cleric in the Player's Handbook is an obvious choice. A good number of the fighter subclasses are fitting. You have the champion and battlemaster archetype from the player's handbook, but I also think you could use the eldritch knight archetype to roleplay a drow judicator. The samurai from Xanthar's Guide to Everything could also be fitting. Finally, a paladin who has taken an oath of conquest from Xanthar's Guide to Everything is another apt choice. While it is not necessary, a PC who is really leaning into the Selvatarm worship aspect of the character, it would be very fitting if they dual wielded weapons. Dungeon Master Options Much like Lol, you can make use of the many different varieties of spiders throughout the various source books. For example, in the Monster Manual, you have the Giant Spider, the Giant Wolf Spider, Face Spider, the spider itself, and the swarm of insects, which you could obviously reskin into being a swarm of spiders. Dragoloths, outlined in Vilo's Guide to Monsters, are sometimes borrowed from the followers of Loth to help carry out the goals of Selvatar's clergy. 
There is no stat block in 5th edition for an Aranea or Were Spider equivalent, but you can find a stat block that exists in the 3.5 edition Monster Manual. There are many Drow stat blocks across official source books that can be utilized by a dungeon master to fit in with the Church of Selvatar. In the Monster Manual, you have the Drow, Drow Elite Warrior, and I would even consider the Drow Priestess as well, since those two clergies are in contact in most, most Wolf-dominated societies. In the recently released Mordekind's Tome of Foes, you have the Drow House Captain and the Drow Arachnomancer as well. There are also some generic stat blocks you can use for NPCs, some from the Monster Manual like the Berserker, the Gladiator, the Knight, the Thug, and the Veteran, but also you can make use of Volo's Guide to Monsters and make use of the Blackguard, Champion, War Priest, and Warlord stat blocks. Selvatarm's favored weapon are the Sword and Mace. This is speculation on my part, but I believe the most loyal and powerful of adherents to Selvatarm might be given access to either one or both of his weapons to borrow. I won't go through the large amount of combat specific magic items in the Dungeon Master's Guide for 5th edition, but a lot are viable. Instead, I will suggest some magic items that would be cool for specific melee fi fighters of Selvatarm. The animated shield massively helps out dual wielders because they don't have access to a shield. The cursed berserker axe is a fitting weapon for a worshipper of Selvatarm who wishes to emulate the berserker rage of their patron deity. The cloak of Arachnida is also another flavorful choice for a worshipper who worships a deity so tied in with spiders. In Xanathar's Guide to Everything, we have access to more magic items, though at the common level of rarity. Um, some cool ones I think that might be amongst the clergy of Selvatarm would include the Cast Off Armor, the Dread Helm, the Horn of Silent Alarm, the Smoldering Armor, the Unbreakable Arrow, and finally the Walloping Ammunition. And alright. With that, I'd like to thank you once again for listening to Religion in the Realms. If you're interested in keeping up with the release of future episodes, you can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and follow the podcast Twitter account at Realms Religion. If you wish to get in touch with me personally, my personal Twitter handle is at Shiz Embrace. That is S-H-I-V-S-E-M-B-R-A-C-E. Next episode, we'll be finishing our look at the Drow Pantheon with an episode on Veyron. Until next time, may Timora look kindly upon your dice rolls, Helm protect you, and Lathander light your path. Music for this episode, Division, by Kevin McLeod, licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0.